Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, we're going to do something a little bit different. This time I was inspired by some pictures, some paintings that I had seen on Pinterest with these really pretty rainbow uh, raindrop silhouette paintings. And I thought, I can do that in cake. So this is how I did that. First of all, we're going to go ahead and make those um, rice paper rainbow I don't know what we're gonna call them this is kind of an abstract idea that I came up with for the topper I thought I needed something for the top and I wanted to stick with the rainbow so it's almost like the the rain rainbow rain was coming out of rainbow clouds is kind of the idea I was going with so what I did was I crumpled up some saran wrap and some parchment paper and I'm just using the rainbow colors with gel food coloring and mixing them with water I wanted this to be nice and thin for two reasons to make these wafer paper decorations and for the dress they both need to be a very thin down consistency so I'm just taking a piece of I'm sorry it's rice paper I will forever eternally do that rice paper and I dampened it a little bit with a water bottle and then I'm just using these colors and just putting them on randomly with a paintbrush now a trick I learned while I was doing this was that you don't want to oversaturate the colors because they will blend together and give you kind of a murky brownish color. So if you do have too much um, of the color on there, just go ahead and, and take a paper towel and just kind of blot some of it off. And even if these aren't fully completely flexible, they will continue to soak up the dampness from the water and from, from the food coloring as they sit. And then you're going to cook these in your oven on the lowest setting possible. Um, it's hard to say exactly how long. I would start with 10 minutes, check them, and then if they're not done, give them a couple more minutes until they are um, completely set up. And then crack the door of your oven open, turn it off, and let them come to room, you know, cool down slowly so they don't crack. Now this is our cake that we're decorating here. This is a four layer eight, no, seven inch cake. Uh, I'm sorry, I corrected myself there. A four layer seven inch cake. And I filled it with buttercream and did a crumb coat with buttercream also. Um, I always try to remember to add a link to my buttercream recipe and I'll try to remember again. And now we are making the disc of fondant for the top. I just used an eight inch board and use that as my guide and I can cut the excess off and set it to the side and then I'm rolling out a panel of fondant that is um, I measured the height and the circumference of the cake so that I know how much to cut off and then once we've got this cut down you're going to set it aside and leave it to set for probably about a half an hour before you even try to transfer it back onto the cake because you don't want it pulling and tearing as you are transferring it. I would let it set up for a little bit. And then I just added that top disc on the top and I just sprayed it with water. Water makes it stick really well. And then cut off your excess. Of course, obviously I turned it upside down and that just makes it a little easier to get a good cut. And it also makes it easier to apply your paneling because you're going to have that sharp crisp corner already. Just because of the way that you're putting it on. Gravity and um, using the top on the bottom at this point creates that corner for you. Now use your fondant smoother to push out any air bubbles. And I like to use a straight edge. I like to use my ruler and an X-Acto knife to lay one piece on top of the other, cut them both at the same time and remove the excess pieces and just merge them together and get it as smooth as you can. And then, of course, we need to turn it right side up again. And I have a piece of tape in between the board, um, the two boards, so that it's not sliding around. Now, to make the silhouette, I'm just using an edible piece of paper. I found this image on line, and I just printed it off on my edible paper. And then I'm just cutting it out with my X-Acto knife. Just follow the lines. Now I thought about going back since this didn't print out as black as I wanted it to be and I thought about just going back in and you could paint over it with um, gel food coloring thin down with some Everclear or vodka 
or you can use those edible markers. But you know what, I thought it kind of, it's kind of like a gray scale. I kind of thought with the, um, the highlights of the white in there, it looks pretty kind of cool that way. So I just left it as is. And I'm just using some piping gel to stick it to the fondant. I like to back my um, edible images with a thin layer of fondant and that keeps it from warping and from bubbling. And I just covered, um, brushed some, um, what you call it, some shortening <laughs> over the top. And that removes any cornstarch, adds, adds a little bit of sheen to it, and it actually, it actually makes sure that you are getting a good adhesion onto the fondant, just by brushing over the top of it like that. And this is the next day. These have um, firmed up and dried and cooled, and then you just remove your saran wrap and your parchment paper. And they're really cool. Now, I didn't, I don't know where the footage for this was. Maybe it was one of those times again where I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. Um, what I did there was I used some acetate, a piece of acetate. I put the image on one side, turned it over, and then I put tape on the other side, and then I just cut it out. So that way that tape, and then pulled the tape off of the acetate, and that's just painter's tape, and it will stick to your fondant until you're ready to remove it. And this is just the same thin down food coloring that I used for the sails or the bowls, whatever you want to call them. And I'm just dabbing it on and letting it drip down. This is definitely an abstract kind of design. And I'm just blotting off the excess that um, pools around the bottom just to prevent any problems. I mean, I think it looks kind of cool with that there because it looks like it's, you know, the water is flooding a little bit. But, um... I didn't want it to affect the cake, so I just blotted that off. And then I used another paper towel, dipped it in the colors, and I'm just kind of blotting patches of color on the top. Just so there wasn't that stark white in between the sides of the cake and then the toppers. Now to remove this, after it has dried, I put it in the refrigerator for about half an hour. Um, you just simply peel it away and it doesn't mar your fondant whatsoever. And the placement of this, I wanted it to look like the rain was hitting the umbrella and avoiding the girl. But, you know, this image is really cool, but the dress goes out beyond the umbrella. The umbrella needed to be bigger, in my opinion, a little wider, um, because these drips that I'm reinforcing here, i not sure that I'm in love with that. I feel like I should have left well enough alone because it looks like her dress is going to get wet. And that wasn't the vision I had in my head. But that's okay. I still think it turned out cool. To attach these toppers, I'm just using buttercream. That works just fine. And these are wafer paper puffs that I, I didn't include the footage because honestly my phone wouldn't be able to handle that much footage to edit <laughs> but I will link a, a, a video where I show you how to make rice paper puffs and they're supposed to kind of look like the clouds with the rainbow so I hope you like this one guys it's a little bit different sometimes I like to experiment and do some different things I hope you liked it I hope you learned something and we'll catch you on the next one so thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video and if you'd like to watch some other videos go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here and if you would like to check out my other social media I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name Sophisticates by Mary and please take the time to share, like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.